This video is about chromosomes and karyotypes. So you need a little bit of background on the cell and uh, inside of the cell is the nucleus, which you already know, and inside of the nucleus is our DNA or our genetic information. So we look inside of the nucleus and look at our DNA. Most of the time it looks like almost like a mesh of tangled spaghettis. Um, but when it's time for the cell to reproduce, it has to copy the DNA. Uh, and in copying the DNA, uh, the DNA sort of gets um, organized into chromosomes. And so chromosomes are these structures here, which are these basically long segments of DNA. And each kind of species has its own number of chromosomes. Um, and many times when you look at chromosomes, it looks like sort of this X-shaped structure. Um, but what we're really looking at is a chromosome and its identical copy attached to it. So we'll just look, think of a chromosome as just one long segment of DNA. Sometimes it'll be in the shape of an X when it's, when it's just been copied. Um, if we were to zoom in on a chromosome, then you'll see what is typically um, shown as DNA, this sort of long double helix or this twisted ladder shape structure that you've probably seen uh, many times. Um, and this double helix shape, um, if you were to zoom in on that, different segments of, of it will be the genes that we've been talking about. So there might be a gene for eye color, for widow's peak, for PTC tasting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if we look at the, um, the, the genes, then of course each person can have a different version or a slightly different version of that gene, and those are the alleles that we've been talking about. So some alleles are dominant, some are recessive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the take-home message is that our DNA is organized into chromosomes, and the chromosomes contain the genes. And of course, as we already know, different versions of genes are the alleles. What's interesting about chromosomes is that um, they can be mapped. So for a different species, especially a humans, there's been a lot of studies of the um, human chromosomes, and we have mapped different traits to different chromosomes. Uh, so what we're looking at here is chromosome uh, number nine, and we can see it's too, too small to see in this text here, but these are some of the traits that have been mapped to that particular chromosome. So there's uh, susceptibility to ovarian cancer. Um, there's uh, a, a kind of um, cholesterol disease. Um, uh, there's um, susceptibility to cancer in the esophagus, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I want you to think about this. So we've been talking about uh, gametes in the past and, and normal cells, now we can attach this idea of chromosomes. So what do you already know about the DNA um, of normal cells and compare, compare that to DNA of gametes? Remember, gametes are sperm and eggs. So for example, if human body cells have 46 chromosomes, how many chromosomes do you expect to be in the human gametes, the sperm and the egg? So think about it for a sec. Um, and then uh, pause and unpause when you're ready to proceed. So um, a little bit of vocabulary first. Uh, the normal cells are what we call somatic cells. So if there are 46 uh, chromosomes in somatic cells, and we already know that the gametes should have half of the DNA, um, then if there's 46 in somatic cells, then there should be 23 chromosomes in our gametes. And that's exactly what we see. And we can look at uh, the chromosome numbers of different kinds of species here, and, and, and you'll see the same pattern. So in the somatic cells, there's a number of chromosomes, and then you see across these different species, whether it's a kind of ant or a type of cat or fruit fly, you see half the number in the gametes. This brings us to the idea of a karyotype. And a karyotype is an image of our chromosomes. So if you were to look at a human karyotype, uh, let's say a male karyotype, you would see the 23 pairs. Um, and then you could do the same thing for female karyotype, 23 pairs, right? Remember one from mom, one from dad inside the pair. Um, 
but you notice that there's a difference. See if you can deduce the difference uh, between the male and the female. And once you, uh, think about it, pause the video, unpause when you're ready to discuss it. So you probably noticed that the last pair, the 23rd pair, is what's different in a male and female. Um, so if we look at the male, we see that there's the X and the Y chromosome of uh, the male in the 23rd pair. And you notice that the Y chromosome is smaller, much smaller, substantially smaller than the X chromosome. In the female, you notice that her 23rd pair, that they're identical. So you, they have two X chromosomes. So these X chromosomes are much larger than the Y. The female is XX, male is XY. Now, so let's talk about all the pairs for a sec, uh, or for a few minutes. Uh, these pairs of chromosomes, like pair number one, or pair number two, or pair 15, um, they're what we call homologous chromosomes. Now, physically, you can tell uh, the similarities between the homologous chromosomes. I want you to study this image for a second and just pay attention to the first 22 pairs of chromosomes. And what do you notice uh, about the pairs? So take, uh, take a moment to think about this, pause the video, unpause uh, when you're ready to discuss. So you probably figured out uh, some similarities. Um, I think the, probably the most important similarity or most noticeable similarity is that the pairs are the same size. So pair number one, the chromosomes are the same size. Uh, pair number eight, those two chromosomes are the same size. Pair 21, they're the same size. You probably also notice that the, the pairs are arranged by uh, size. So chromosome pair number one has the largest chromosomes, then it gets slightly smaller, all the way to pair 22 has the smallest. But there's something that's even more important about these homologous pairs they contain the same genes. So for example, if we look at pair number one, if there's a gene for eye color, let's say towards the bottom, near the bottom tip of the first chromosome, there's gonna be a gene for eye color in the same location of the other chromosome in that pair. And then if there's, let's say, you know, a gene for uh, widow's peak in the middle of, um, the first chromosome in pair eight, well, there's gonna be a gene for widow's peak in the same location uh, in the other part of um, the chromosome in the pair number eight, excuse me. Uh, so they have the same genes, but they don't necessarily have the same alleles, right? Because one of these chromosomes in the pair is gonna be from mom and one is gonna be from dad. So if mom and dad have different alleles, then the chromosomes inside each pair is going to be slightly different. So the homologous pairs have the same genes, but not necessarily the same alleles. Now that's true for pairs 1 through 22. Homologous pairs 1 through 22 are what we call autosomes. So most of the traits that we've, we've discussed in the past, uh, that we've done Punnett squares about, um, those have been autosomal traits. You know, whether it's blood type or hair texture or eye color, the genes for those uh, traits are on the autosomes, the first 22 pairs. Then we're going to learn that the 23rd pair is actually what we call the sex chromosome. So instead of autosome, these are the sex chromosomes. And they have slightly different traits. Uh, they're not really homologous to each other, right? Because you see that the X is much larger than the Y. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in, an, in another video when we talk about sex link uh, traits. But I just want you to get the intuition that uh, the traits we've been learning about so far, that we've done Punnett squares about so far, have been on the autosomes, the first 22 pairs of chromosomes. So hopefully that uh, was a, a thorough explanation of chromosomes and karyotypes. Thank you.